I'm starting this video by running through the setup once, so that once you've seen the video and you want to see all the steps put together again, you can just jump back to the start of the video. Start by rapidly tapping down into the wall as we normally would to try to set up the clip. Once you've started pushing into the wall, start doing single frame down presses. We'll start cycling between two positions. When in the rightmost of those positions, do a one frame pause buffer down, unpause without jumping. Press down and pause after one frame of movement. Do a single frame pause buffer down, unpause without jumping. Tap right, down, down, right, down, down. Tap down several times so you don't get pushed back in bounds. Start pressing down for longer amounts and you'll easily clip out from there. There are a few precise movements we need to perform here, and precise movements are not something we normally need to think about much in Pac-Man World. So let's go over the tools we have to build this trick. First, let's talk about single frame directional inputs. There's not a lot to go over here, but there are a couple things to keep in mind. One, this game runs at 30 frames per second, so pressing a direction for a single frame is not terribly difficult. And two, when you press a direction for a single frame, it takes several frames for PAX movement to run its course. So when you're doing multiple single frame inputs in a row, you want to wait a little bit between each directional press, or else you won't move the same exact amount each time. Next, we need to talk about pause buffering. I feel like pause buffering is a relatively underutilized mechanic in PS1 speedruns. In most games, you can use pause buffering to advance the game one frame at a time to help you find the exact frame that you need to perform an action, be it changing direction, jumping, making an attack, whatever. We can fairly easily track how many frames have passed during pause buffers by keeping an eye on Pac-Man's walk animation. When repeatedly pausing and unpausing while holding down, look at Pac's arms. At the start of the animation, the left hand will be lower than the right, I actually call this frame zero, because Pac-Man hasn't started moving yet. If we release direction and unpause right now, Pac-Man will remain in the same position where he started. In the following frame, frame one, we can see that Pac's arms are level, and then on frame two, we can see the left arm is now higher than the right. Identifying individual frames of movement gets harder beyond this, but for the sake of this setup, we really only need to care about 0 frame, 1 frame, and 2 frame pauses. In most games, we use pause buffering to simulate a series of frame-perfect inputs. But in Pac-Man World, pausing the game is... weird. For some reason, pausing the game while moving will have an impact on your momentum. As a result, pausing and unpausing while moving will put you in a different position than if you hadn't paused at all. When I first realized this, I thought this was terrible. We can't use repeated pause buffers to get to an exact position, which I would normally see as pause buffers losing their entire purpose. But my eyes have since been opened, and I've come to see this as great news. This quirk of pause buffering makes RTA inputs a bit more precise for us, but it also gives us more options for precise movement around the world, and I'm not sure we would have this current setup without it. Instead of only having eight directions to move, by choosing between pause buffered and non-pause buffered movement, we effectively double our options for each frame. In addition, we can also end a pause buffer by jumping to stop our movement early. So instead of doubling our options for each frame, we've actually tripled them, the possibilities this brings up could potentially be even bigger for tassing, but that's well out of the scope of this video. Now that we understand our building blocks of movement, let's go over the setup one more time in a little bit more detail. As we push into the wall to start the clip, we want to start tapping down. This wall is weird, and it might feel almost random where we get pushed. However, if we consistently do single frame down presses, we eventually end up cycling between two positions. I'll call them 5129 and 5116, named after the horizontal component of our position in the game's memory. From position 5129, pressing down for one frame will move you to 5116 on the left, and pressing down for one frame again will move us back to 5129 on the right. In fact, from the research I did on this, it appears that from virtually any spot remotely nearby, doing single frame down presses will eventually set you in this cycle. 
As I said earlier, you do need to let your movement settle between presses, or else you won't be moving a consistent amount, and you can't be certain about where you are. Once it looks like we've been moving back and forth here for six or seven down presses, we can be reasonably sure that we're in the 5129-5116 cycle. We want to be on the right on 5129. From 5129, a pause buffered down press will move us to 5117 instead of 5116. This may sound like a very minor difference, but it makes all the difference in the world for us. Notice here that holding down while standing at 5116 will make us slide along the wall and go back in bounds. Whereas holding down while standing at 5117 will nearly make us clip already. It won't, sadly. But we just need to make a few adjustments from here to guarantee that clip. To get to our next desired position, 5131, we need to do a little bit more than a pause buffer. We need to press down and pause on the first frame of movement. You can tell that one frame has passed because Pac's arms will be level with each other. Then, while still holding down, we need to pause buffer one more frame of movement. If done correctly, unpausing the game at this point will land us at 5131. Personally, I think going from 5117 to 5131 is the hardest part of this setup. It is so easy to pause buffer for zero frames instead of one. If we do a zero frame pause buffer, that does mess with our momentum enough that we cannot carry on as normal from here. But all is not lost, there is a backup. Well, the game is still paused after our zero frame pause buffer, do a zero frame pause buffer while holding right instead of down. End that pause by jumping. Then tap down three times. That combination of inputs will set us right back at 5117, and we can try again. If we mess up any of those inputs, or if you think this backup is more trouble than it's worth, then we just need to start the whole setup again. But once we are back at 5117 and we do the movement correctly, we can move on to the last step of the clip. Once we get to 5131, we actually have two options for how to get the clip from here. My preferred method is to do the following single frame inputs. Right, down, down, right, down, down. After the last down press, you'll notice you get pushed to the left. If you hold down from here, you will quickly get pushed back in bounds. Instead of holding down, tap down several times to avoid the push back in bounds. Then you can start holding down longer and you can very easily go out of bounds. The other option from 5131 is to tap down eight times in a row, and then hold down and you will quickly go out of bounds. On the surface, this sounds like the better method, because you are guaranteed the clip after holding down, this is faster than the first method. And you don't have to worry about getting pushed back in bounds. However, there are a couple of downsides to this method. First, single frame inputs are not hard, per se, but they also aren't entirely easy to do many times in a row. This method only requires two extra single frame inputs, but those two extra inputs cause me to fail this approach significantly more often than the other one. If you find single frame inputs easier than I do, maybe this approach would be better for you. Second, the right down down right down down approach seems to have some leniency to it. If you make any mistakes during the eight downs approach, if a single one of your inputs was two frames instead of one, this method will fail. Whereas I have had many attempts at the right down down right down down approach, where I accidentally hit one of the inputs for more than one frame, and the rest of the setup still worked. Ultimately, this choice is up to you. If you find that you are very consistent with the eight downs approach, it does appear to be the better option. But if you are more concerned with safety, the right down down right down down approach would probably be the better option for you. And that is the whole setup! I hope that with these movement options in mind, we'll be able to build setups like this for some of the other seemingly random tricks in this game.